Hello, my YouTubian friends. Come on in, have a seat, strap on your helmets. You know how that goes. You can thank our friend Tomas, our beloved subscriber, for this video because today he sent me a drum machine pattern finder. That's right. It's one of those situations where I can't believe that I haven't made one of these already. By the way, did I say your name right? Is it Thomas, Tomas? He's got the A with the accent in it. I'll just call you Tom like a regular Canadian. How about that? Okay, so thank Tom. Leave a thank you in the comment section below if you're going to build one of these devices. And I think you will, and I think you're going to want to because it's pretty slick. Okay, let's start the show. <laughs> So what he sent me was basically at first look just looks like a drum machine and inside there you have your sounds just typical like you always do right but the thing is if you create a MIDI region in the track right there and you just mash all the notes and hold them for say a bar or however long let's just do you know what let's go big let's let's do four bars okay do 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 four bars and you just mash every note that's on your MIDI keyboard that has a drum sound on it. Do, do, do. And just drag them out like that. Okay. And now what you're going to find is if you don't have Tomas's or Tom, <laughs> if you don't have Tom's drum machine thing, it's just going to play all of your drum samples once and then you'll have dead silence for the rest of it. But using Tom's thing, this is what happens. Check it out. Okay, so notice as I turn some of these dials, the pattern of that, uh, that uh, given sample changes. So if I turn up the snare, right, it plays it more frequently and at a different pattern. So depending on how you turn these knobs, you can come up with a whole slew of different drum patterns, which is perfect for finding uh, or getting inspiration for your next track. Let's just play around with this for a sec. Check it out. Obviously, I need a little practice with that. But then I thought to myself, well, I could make my own. And as far as you guys are concerned, watching this video, you could easily make your own too, because you've probably already made your own drum machine. So what I did then was I just loaded up a drum machine. Let's go in here, do ba doop do drum machine. And I have mine set so that as soon as I click drum machine, it puts in uh, a very basic drum set. For me, it's just a kick, a hat, or a snare, sorry, a closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, and a clap sound. And that's basically it. So if I'm starting a song and I just want a basic kit to kind of find a rhythm, I'll load this up. And traditionally, I'll put in a MIDI region here and I'll, I'll print some stuff in there. Or maybe I, I will perform it on uh, the, the MIDI controller or the pads or something like that. But now, Thanks to our buddy Tom, I found a different way. Well, no, he's found a different way, and I'm totally stealing the idea because it's just too good to just leave it alone. So basically, all I did was go in front of all of my samples. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this drum pattern back in, or drum machine. Okay, so this is what I started with. And say we open up the clap. Well, there's the sound. There's the machine, the sampler that makes the clap. And before it, I just threw in an arpeggiator. Okay. I did that for each one of these samples. I threw an arpeggiator in front of them. Okay. Let's check it out. So there we go. We have our arpeggiator and we have the sampler that's making the sound of the clap. So now if I hold the clap, uh, let's turn this up. You can see that the arpeggiator uh, will just continually play it depending on the pattern that I lay out for it. So if you notice, every time I have a different arpeggiator, depending on the sample that I'm playing, the arpeggiator changes a little bit. And basically, I don't know how I really arrived at this decision, but uh, the logic behind it is if I have a clap sound, I'm probably not going to need a clap to play more than eight times per bar. So therefore, I set the arpeggiator to eight steps 
and I probably don't want a clap to play on the first beat. I probably want it inside the bar a little bit. So I just turned up, what is this? One, two, three, four. I've turned up the fifth, uh, the fifth, what you may call it, velocity trigger, okay? And then for my kick, um, I'm probably not gonna want more than four kicks in a bar. So, and I probably will want it at least on the first of every bar. So I turn that up. Remember, this will all change depending on how I set these parameters, but I'm just thinking uh, in basic terms as far as setting up all the arpeggiators before I start to mod uh, what note patterns that they all play on. Okay, and the same with the snare. I'm probably not gonna need more than eight snare hits in one bar. So I just put it to eight and then I turned up uh, a couple of them inside the bar somewhere. Same with hats. Actually, I might want 16 uh, hi-hat hits in one bar, so I put on 16 steps, and you can see that I staggered their velocity a little bit just to humanize them the tiniest amount. And of course, we, can, we could map like a macro to turn that humanize effect on and off. And, uh, and then open hi-hat, same thing. I'm not gonna use an open hi-hat very often, but I want the option. And so I put up 16 steps and I just put it on one bar so you won't hear this more than once. Okay, so now I did the same thing basically. I just took uh, MIDI region and I mashed all the notes on side, inside the, uh, the drum machine. And let's, uh, let's go big again. Let's, let's make this, let's stretch it out. There we go. Okay, so now let's have a listen. See what I'm saying? I'm not doing a very good job at it, but you could go in here and you can just play with the, the note value patterns like this, uh, right? Between one and 64. And you can change it between quarter notes, dotted quarter notes or triplets. And then you will get uh, the result will be a different pattern each time. And so depending on how you sit there and kind of play with them all, uh, you could change those up quite drastically. So then I thought, well, see, Tom has made it nice so that all the knobs are just sitting there. And so I thought about doing that too, and I actually did go and do it, but I ended up deleting it. And the reason is, is because uh, for me, I just wanted, I want, there was, I wanted more knobs than what were here. And so, uh, you know, I, I wanted one for this, uh, the note value, one for the note length value, and, and I wanted that for each one of these samples. And then I wanted another macro that would just modulate both of these at the same time in a strange pattern of some kind. And so, and then I thought, well, I'm personally okay with just going to each sample and changing them down here. And so I didn't go and do it, but I'll show you how you would do it, okay? So say, let's start with the kick because you always kind of, well, in, in my life, you always start with the kick. It goes kick, snare, hat, uh, rack tom, rack tom, overhead, overhead. But don't worry about that. Let's we'll start with the kick, and then you open up this uh, this what you might call it the mod uh, bank, and you just just click it and go for macro. Let's add another macro right away, and even a third one. But a bing, right there. Okay, so the first one. Let's bring all these down as far as they go. So the first one, uh, mod that up. Okay, second one, mod that up as well. Third one, let's put it in the center and let's put this somewhere here. And this is just like, just play with this at random and just do whatever because this one's just kind of your, your funky element. Okay, so now you could open up the macro 
uh, create a new one of these and you could touch that you could name it uh, what, what do we call it kick rate okay and then you can grab another one click this and we'll call it kick note maybe and then grab this one click that and we'll call it kick rando for random all right beautiful okay so now uh, if we're just listening to the kick right pretty awesome so then you can go and do that for your snare same thing uh your hi-hat close hi-hat open and then your clap and then you would have all these sort of uh knobs here to kind of play with and you know what why don't we just why don't we uh, throw in the snare and it's just might as, well, just might as well do it if we're gonna do it right if there's anything worth doing it's worth doing right so let's just add the macros and suck it up and do it again lower these down to the lowest value click the mod button bring them up to their highest value do 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 change in values now i'm going to bring this up to like there and this up to here maybe i don't know bring this down and bring that up okay all right so let's click uh let's click this do that and we'll call that snare rate that's not how you spell snare okay we'll click this one click the mod do -ba do do snare note and then this guy in there and we'll call it snare rando okay so now let's check it out wow get the point this one's really screwing with it I'm gonna go ahead and delete that <laughs> hurts everything I know about rhythm inside my brain but you could go ahead and, and change those to your liking the important thing to take away from this is one Tom is awesome for sending this along and two uh, just go ahead and throw an arpeggiator in front of all of your your drum samples and then just dick around with these settings here and then you can just mash all the keys that play a drum sample in your MIDI region and if you're stuck and you just need some inspiration well you could sit there for probably endless hours until you need to at least at least until you need to shave again and uh and just play around with these and find the most ridiculous drum patterns that you probably would not have come up with if you had to sit there and uh and just go like this you know what i mean and like click different ones obviously you wouldn't do that because these notes are huge but you see what i'm saying like you're never gonna sit here and just dream up all these like random notes uh, more than you would being able to just use this guy like this
anyway so check it out do it make one of your own it's definitely worth having one on board if you're ever gonna play around with it and then once you make your own you'll be used to your own so you'll know how to turn the knobs to kind of get what you're looking for and uh and don't be afraid to and add in those random uh, those random macros that just modulate a whole bunch of shit because that's fun, right? Like mod it so that it goes up to 16 steps maybe. And then, uh, and you know, just play around with it. It's fun. It's easy. Uh, you probably already did half the work. All you got to do now is throw an arpeggiator in front of each one. Uh, Tom did something different though. Let's see. Cause he put an LFO mod in front of his. So now if I click, uh, this guy, then you can see, or sorry, not that guy. If I click the LFO, you can see what he's all modulated here. Where is it? Yeah, so he's modulated the steps with the top LFO. And then, you know, so he did something a little bit different. So definitely step outside of your box there and check it out. Okay, again, thank you, Tom, for sending this along. It was super cool. I can't believe I didn't make one of these already, but I appreciate you sending it to me now. I hope the rest of you guys thank him for that and get some use out of it. All right, okay, be good to each other. We'll see you in the next video.